Talk to me about the work you do on 700s to get them shooting the way you want them to shoot, Jake. We tear them apart and, and blueprint the action so we square all the threads, single point cut them in the machine, and square off the face, and then uh, fit the barrel to them, custom chamber. So this one's one we did for a guy already in 65284, and he's decided to go 300 win mag. Um, gonna use it as his hunting rifle now. And we got him a Accuracy International AXMC. So we do barrels for the, the new AX Multi-Cal, and we do the new AIM uh, AT and Desert Tactical SRS. So he's kind of stepped I, up. I'm not happy with the extractor level. on a 700. The stamped no, spring extractor, I think it's awful. I, do you do the Seiko conversion? No, we do majority of them go with a PTG bolt body. This is a uh, long action Magnum M16 style extractor. So. Okay, so you're gonna change out your bolt body then? Yep, we usually change them out to that. So that's that a full-on custom job though. Yeah. I mean, the guy brings his gun in, he goes, hey, I hate the extraction on the 700. Convert it for to a Me, Seiko for instance. Yeah. What's Se the price on that? That's not cheap. We, no, it's That's a bolt vary. body, that's, and that's shop bolt work. Bolt body and, and shop work and all that. So you're gonna save a few hundred bucks just doing a Seiko. Just 200. Cut. Yeah. yeah, just a couple hundred bucks going to an M16 or, or Seiko extractor. You know, a $300 bolt body and whole foot, full custom gun. It's a lot cheaper to just change the extractor. Yeah, it adds up quick. Yeah. This is Jake Gun Vault in Utah. Good dude. Right. And we're gonna do a mini project in this state-of-the-art CNC shop. Great things can happen with a machine like this. If you're a gun guy, a gun project guy, Dude, the shop is awesome. It was funny because I was here earlier and then I said, hey, let's do that one project we're talking about. And I left for 20 minutes because I lost my camera, long story. I'm on my backup camera and I come back and this his shop is like spick and span. We try to make it look like this every night we go home, but it's the week before Christmas, so. You know, I know you're not tornado. kidding me because your store is kept meticulous. Yeah, we're really it, it's, particular. You know where I stand on your bathrooms. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> it drives me nuts. So, but, Does it drive you nuts? Yeah, I've got my own out here, so you don't need to show it. But I like to use. You have your own private camera. bathroom, dude. Yeah. You're like George Costanza from Seinfeld. Well, yeah, me, Jeremy, and Pappas are about all that do our thing in there after so, lunch. So we keep it. So clean. something's floating. You know who to go we looking know who for. It was. You know when Mike's <laughs> been in there. So. In the chuck, there is the barrel to my 22 Magnum Ruger American rifle, and Jake is gonna thread it for me. Um, I didn't get the threaded version, it's the one I reviewed, it shoots so well. Uh, selling it's a hassle, I, I just get another one. Yeah, they make a factory threaded, but then I gotta do another 1473. Just thread this one, and it's an interesting project for TMP because you do offer a barrel threading service. We do, we do quite a bit of threading. Usually Mondays and Wednesdays, we're Pretty much threading barrels and putting muzzle brakes on all day. So dude sends you his Ruger American. Now nowadays you're probably gonna buy it pre-threaded, but any gun and he wants it threaded for a can, so that's precision threading, how much? Gonna be 90 bucks if they send us a barreled action or just a barrel, and then 120 to if it's an assembled firearm. Okay. And that's CNC cut, so. What we've done here is uh, we've already found the center of the bore, so we put a, uh, a rod in and we dial in off the center of the bore. This one was, pretty far out. You know, we're using a three-jaw chuck here uh, just for some of the stuff I was doing before. I didn't want to change out the whole head, but it uh, has four-way adjustments on the whole body, uh, and so we found center on it. Uh, if we can't get center on them in this, we'll change to a four-way independent and uh, make sure we get the bore nice and centered before we cut it off. That way, if you're going to use a cam, it's nice and concentric. Everything's all centered. You're not going to get a baffle strike. So, so we already tell guys when you mean out around that the barrel itself inside the bore is great, but the outside diameter is yeah, is kind of messed out. up. Yeah, we've seen some Mosin Nagants. Yeah, and they are so far out we can't even thread them. Wow, we've had a couple, you know, two or three. Some, you know, usually we'll be able to dial them in. But they have an excuse, man. They're getting yeah. bombed by the Nazis yeah, in freaking 1940. All. They're freaking putting a yeah. gun together and There's by candlelight. They did pretty good. They did pretty good. You know. This one's got no excuse. Ruger. No, it, it's out. You know, when we turn this on, you'll see 
what it is. So we've already zeroed this tool. This is going to cut our uh, main thread tenon, just the length and the diameter, so it's half inch. We're going to do uh, Silencer Co. Sparrow spec threads. So it's 480 thousandths long, and then we're going to cut a relief for your O-ring engagement, and then we'll go in and thread it. So you're a little over 650 thousandths, so we'll call it a little bigger than 5 eighths of an inch diameter on your barrel. So we've taken your front sight and just loosened the screw and we flip it around. Normally this is up front. We've just reversed it and screwed it back on. So we told That's the smart, machine. Man. We started it in an inch, might be a little bigger than we need, but hey, what happened to my fiber, fiber optic insert, man? Oh yeah, I busted it. You broke it out. They we'll, all break. We'll put a new one in there. They're great while they work, and then about two outings, they're snapped. Yeah, after you they're not durable, it into dude. something, kick it over on the, lean it against the table and break them. So, but the machine will just come in here and get. It'll cut this so you've got a nice square shoulder that'll line up with the shoulder where your thread's in. Okay, at the top of the screen will be the address to Gun Vault. If you need a threading service, use them. Uh, you might have a delay in turnaround because uh, Jake and I are working on a really cool project. Stay tuned. Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be worth the, the wait. It's freaking cool, dude. But let's uh, a custom build. I'll tell you that much right now. Let's see where it goes. I'm gonna uh, okay. push start. We've already got it programmed, so we're gonna start your your turn and face. I mean, the machine's kind of telling us the general idea of what shape we're making. So it might take it a second to cut because of that front sight. But We'll normally have this guard down, but we can't film yeah. that way, so we just got safety glasses on. So we'll, we'll normally be running coolant and have this guard down, so we're going to cut this dry so that the filming is easier to see. And then when we thread it, we'll go and we'll put some uh, put some tap magic on there to make sure everything turns out okay. And uh, normally we don't hang this much out of the uh, the chuck, but you can see it's starting to cut right there. It's just we usually have a, a little bit closer to make sure we don't get any any chattering out of it, but with that sight, we kind of have to hang it out there a little. You can hear it knocking on that uh, front sight, and you can see how out around it is now. That it's it's kind of wobbly in there, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sure if it gets boring. We'll I'll be cut cutting down. Some of it, yeah. You can see what it's going to look like there. Yep. We're going to bring the machine back out and cut a chamfer. A chamfer. Uh, nice thing about this machine, you, you, it comes into play with, uh, with the crown. A lot of other places when they do your crown, we do an 11 degree crown, but when they do it, it's going to be an, an end mill. Uh, kind of, this will give you an idea of what it looks like. We don't use them, but this is a 5 8 inch end mill, but they'll have a four flute end mill where this will be cut at an 11 degree angle and they'll have a, a rod in here mm -hmm. as a pilot to go in the bore. So they're actually going in the bore with that pilot and then the, uh, the tool's cutting at an 11 degree. Our machine, we use a boring bar like this one and the machine cuts on the angle. So it's not everything centered off the bore. So when we go in there and start, start pulling back it's perfect off the center of the bore. There's not as much wobble, and, and you don't have a pilot going down the bore. Impressive. Like that. So most impressive, Jake. I'm just gonna check. By the way, that green light flash. You mean the bath? The bathroom is clean. Yeah. <laughs> if so it we goes just, red, Jake will leave this machine and go box in some ears. We'll go find some. <laughs> so we just told it to cut on a 45 degree angle. We're gonna tell it our RPM, what direction. Bring this up here. We'll come in about. Actually, we're gonna do this in a second. These are sparrow spec threads. Yep. So we got another cut to do. So we'll go back in here. We're gonna change it. There's one of the shop workers working hard. Jeremy, our apprentice, He's learning how to do all this stuff. That's cool. So working on a tabor, it looks like. Nine millimeter conversion. I bet that's fun. I love Tavor's. Such a good gun. So, like I said, we usually got oil on it, but I'm gonna put a little tap magic on there just so we don't have any galling while we're doing this. See a little smoke there from the oil. You kind of taste it a little too. 
Nothing like the taste of burnt oil smoke in the morning. So we cut a 45 in there to get your O-ring to seat on. Oh, that's cool. Then we'll unlock the cut. That way it just funnels right into that O-ring with that cut. And we're going to do a little 45 right up here. We're going to come right up into where your threads start. We'll get that little angle out and then we'll do it again. An outside angle and we 45 it. That's where your threads stay. Do you do this like that. good of a job on every barrel threading job you do or is it just because I'm the camera? No, we do it the same every time. Might be a little slower than trying to walk around you and, yeah, and let you I'm film it. But In the way is what he's saying. Yeah. No doubt it's cheaper to buy the ready-made threaded Ruger American. But like I was saying, for me it's just easier to thread the one I got. It's registered to me, so I have to do new paperwork, and selling guns is a freaking hassle. And you get to video this. And we get to video a cool little project. By the way, at Gun Vault, uh, we give him TMP guns that we cycle through. Mm -hmm. I have found that's the quickest way to get rid of them. So come to Gun Vault, ask for TMP guns. What TMP guns are there up for sale? And they're there. If you want it signed, I guess I'll sign it. I'm kind of scared about signing guns. <laughs> I mean, if it's using a crime or something. Better make sure it's a good one. Something nefarious. Yeah, it's got to be something. Yeah. Unless it's like, I don't know, eight or higher on my likability, I won't sign it. Yeah. Forget it's it. It's got to be way up there. Okay, bro, what are you so, saying? So, what we've done is uh, we've told the machine where the front for this threading tool, we told it where the front of the thread tenon is. And uh, right off the face here, we've got our length cut, and we've got our O-ring cut and our 45s. So we've already got the program in here for the threads. It's uh, 0.48 inches long, but uh, this cutter is 62 thousandths wide. So we've taken that off, that's why we're doing. About half the people just quit watching that. after that information. Yeah, well. A lot of work for a Ruger American though, huh? Yeah, a little bit. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. I can see why he has to charge what he charges. So I'm just going to stand here and do what Jake's doing and he's yeah. got to pay that dude. Yeah, you can watch it. It's about to start cutting now. You'll see a light thread start to appear. I wonder if this holds the same amount of interest as watching an excavator work at a construction site, which, by the way, I still like. It's That's cool. Actually, yeah, I, heavy equipment working I used out. to run. I dig it. Heavy equipment, excavators. You did? Uh, yeah, I used to build rock walls. And one of the other things I did besides building motors and Rock You've seen young. Next How old are you? 34. You've lived a couple lives already? Yeah, I grew up with a grandpa that's a developer, so kind of got into that stuff a little earlier. Learned, learned how to drive on a, on a backhoe. So. Hmm. Let's see, so Jake falls into our dangerous things philosophy. As a kid, he learns how to yeah. operate dangerous things safely yeah. with a, a level of competency. And Grandpa following me to Great Grandpa's house driving the back. How old were you then when you started running that? Maybe 12. That's what I'm saying. That's how you gotta learn. That's what I've told my viewers forever. Dude, you're a walking example of one of my philosophy videos. So now he owns a gun store and a custom gun shop. We're just gonna do another cut about the same depth. American businessman. We're just gonna try and make sure we get rid of any burrs. Put a little more oil on it. So we're going to bring this in so it just touches that shoulder and you can see there's a little offset so my tool doesn't strike anything at the back part. So it just touches, we bring it back, you can see if it pulls off any, make sure it's square. As you come in here you'll see it start to dig in the corner a little first. And as soon as it's making a cut the whole way you'll get a little squeak sometimes with no oil. Now you're square? Now we know it's square. That way, you know, a lot of uh, other places, if you see a manual machine, they'll come in here with a tool a little bigger than this, and they'll go in the depth of their miner, of the cut, and their machine will actually start here and cut from here out, or they'll have to cut in. You don't get quite as close of a cut on the threads as far as getting close to the shoulder as you do with a CNC. And you can see Silencer Co., they do a really good job on keeping their threads specs pretty tight. We've had. You see the O-ring really in there, results. guys. Yep. 
but the back here where it threads in and touches, uh, a lot of people will cut that out, but if we're doing a Silencer Co product or, uh, you know, we do a lot of these APA little bastards and fat bastards, they've got it cut there. So I just leave it in there. It gets a nice square, square fit from uh, where the shoulder beat meets up here and right there, nice and tight. Uh, it's just one of those little things that that makes it awesome. Yeah, makes it cool. And we're gonna hit your just make it's uh, steel. We usually cut a lot of stainless steel, but if you notice some of the 4140 and 4150 yeah. chromoly stuff, so there's a little edge there. So we'll polish all that out off camera and everything. You don't want to watch that. So how about in longevity? Do you see a difference between 40 and 50 steels? I, I don't no. shoot them. They seem identical no, when I'm shooting really. them. I can't tell. We're just stainless is custom guns. We usually always do a stainless, but uh, if someone wants a blued gun, we do. 416? 416. Mm -hmm. That's what most of them are using. 416 and 420 on some things. So this is our boring bar. We're going to use this bigger one. So we say we're coming back and changing our chamfer angle to 11 degrees. Zoom in the shell. Okay, we're gonna come in and just touch it, then fill the machine. It's 11. Just to get a little bit out. Clean those out. So what we're gonna do is come in, come inside the bore, and then release the angle on the machine, go in the bore a little bit and then pull it out so we don't have any, we don't want to roll a burr inside the bore of it. So that just did the majority of our cut for us. We're just telling it it's an inside cut and then as we bring it back out, just make sure we don't roll any burrs inside it. We haven't done a shop video in TV in a while. Oh, the time. machine's coming out at an angle there. Hey. It goes a long way. Can you mill me out a Gao 8 30 millimeter cannon like the A10 has? You could probably make that from scratch for me, couldn't you? I want to mount one in my car for traffic. Yeah, some destructive devices, stuff going on. So yeah, we'll just polish it up and blew it and let him go shoot. Gun vault, Jake. Threading a Ruger American barrel. Attention to detail, that's kind of what I'm taking away from this. Yeah workstation get out of the way. I gotta tell you I've sent some barrels off to get threaded before and they came back with some problems. Yeah. Yeah it's like it's it was cut too deep. And that's, why the, we huh? try and, that's why we try and fit them to it. Silencer Co products. Um, we've had some of Mike Pappas, his new dead air stuff. Those those the threads on those are really nice. They're just it's just from Mike is like you. He's, yep. He's really particular. Very particular, the dude. The guys at Silencer Co have done a pretty good job keeping it that way. You know, we just, their muzzle devices have been really consistent. So good. you can kind of thread some of those on there and not really have any issues. You know, some of the others we've had some variants in, but it doesn't hurt to send your stuff in and make sure it's fit as tight as it can. Though. So. Okay, that's Gun Vault. That's Jake. If you want something threaded, send it on. If you don't, whatevs. If you want to do a TP special for these guys, let me know. I will. Let's see you what we can do. do we can threading if they we'll give them ten bucks off. Okay, so it's going to be. They mentioned this eighty bucks. What? Then if your gun's assembled, one ten. Okay, so he's going to take ten bucks off if you're a TMP here. Mention code nothing fancy to Jake and crew when you send your gun in, or better yet, when you send your disassembled barrel in. That's what you do. Out. That fancy project. See you! That's a better group. That was right on. Opened up there. I'm 
I may have to experiment to find a good load that works with this can. I mean, these are okay. They're not shooting into one hole, though. What a great bolt gun, man. Let's go take a look now. The Ruger American with a Sparrow suppressor. Impromptu video. Testing some other stuff here too that I can't tell you about yet. Here's my range car today, dudes. Killer. Wearing the stock wheels. Fresh from powder coat. Uh-huh. Sick. Love this car. Drive it while I can. Gray day. Range. It's fun today. Every gun I've brought out have shot, has shot really good. Really good. And that excites me, makes it fun. When they don't perform, I'm not having fun. It's miserable. I consider my max range on this Ruger American 22 mag about 150 yards for me. Seems like the, the round just drops so precipitously after that word of the day probably ought to go to a 223 maybe one of the new rimfire magnums see how we did first two groups were not great right there right there uh, that's okay that's okay and these are my ladder groups so that's pretty good that was my last group pretty good that's with that gold dot 40 grain personal defense. I suspect the groups opened up a little bit with a can because of the higher velocity of the 22 mag. Maybe, just maybe, I'll do some load experimentation. Such a good gun for the money. That's it. Just wanted to show you, let you hear that can on the 22 Ruger American 22 mag version. See ya.